Hi, welcome or welcome back to Trail and Ultra Running Training. My name is Will Franz. I'm a running coach, strength coach, and the whole goal of this podcast is to try and provide a little more free information so that you can train better and have more fun out on the trails, maybe do a little better in your next race. If you Today I want to talk about walking and hiking or whatever we want to call it and however that might play into your race strategy. If you appreciate this information, I would really like it if you hit subscribe or leave a rating or review or do anything that would allow the robot overlords to give us some, to, to share this with more and more people so that more people see it. If you do that, thank you. So today, walking, this is a topic that comes up a lot. It is a topic that comes up a lot with people I coach and with just people who send me DMs on the internet. And sometimes it's a question, as in, like, can I walk on this next run? Or is it all right if I walk here? Or I'll hear the opposite, like someone talking about their goals. And really the big overarching goal of their running or the next little bit is to run X amount of miles or run a marathon or run a half marathon without walking. And that plays a big part into their target, right? And I know I've talked about walking or whatever before, and every couple months I get a little more clarity on the subject, and considering it's something that continues to come up, I figured it might be worth discussing again. So first, yes, it's okay to walk. Um, Running should be enjoyable. Sometimes it should also be hard, but we do this shit for fun. So if you aren't enjoying it, or if you're just suffering through Sometimes 10 to 15 seconds of walking, especially well-timed walking, would improve your training and can improve your relationship with the sport. So, of course, you can walk if that's the case. Now, when I say that like it shouldn't be enjoyable, I do feel like I press this message a lot, and I think it's important. I also don't want that to come across as, like, nothing matters and do whatever. Like, it, it does... If you do care about your performance, your training does need to you need to act like you care, right? So this can this can change. It can be to me working hard and like putting in the effort really is enjoyable. And if you want to improve, you will need to work hard and put in the effort and find a way to enjoy that. Now, for me, sometimes, especially if we're having a rough day, like if you hear my voice, I'm always a little scratchy. Today I'm exceptionally scratchy because there's a lot of smoke in the air. And it just means I can't breathe really well. My face is even more clogged than usual. So walking is going to be appropriate today if I run. Even if I run inside because we're just starting at a deficit. And nobody's going to come and take my imaginary runner card. I'm not going to get pulled over. They're not going to hop up on the next treadmill and like give me a fine. The run police aren't going to come to get me. It is fine to walk. Sometimes you might have to. Sometimes the incline's a little steep, or you're just having a bad day like I am today, or the weather is particularly problematic. Um, Maybe it's smoke like here, or maybe it's like 100 and 100 like it often gets in the summer in the south. But walking is okay. And depending on you and your physiology, it it might actually help you perform a little better because depending on like your personal build up or like makeup then you may have a higher or lower percentage of fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers right like we all have a mix every muscle has a mix there's not like a slow twitch muscle only some muscles have a higher percentage of one or the other naturally And some people have a higher percentage, like, overall, depending on their genetics. So, if you are, like, higher in the fast twitch, then we actually benefit in training from a bigger disparity between paces on intervals. We actually benefit from a higher percentage of, like, or a little more on the walk break side of things. Because when you are running, it is going to be you're going to have a higher likelihood of using your fast twitch muscle fibers earlier. Even if we're going out for an easy, like, long run, then 
if you were a really like slow twitch athlete, um, think Kipchoge, right? Like if you were a really slow twitch athlete, then you're going to be able to run and cruise and you're going to thrive off of the success of your muscle fibers. Um, however, if you are more of a like sprinter, but you decide to do, uh, endurance things, then at some point in there, you're going to end up hitting this place where your fast twitch gets recruited and it's going to get recruited a lot earlier than maybe some other people who are a little more on the slow twitch side of things. Now your fast twitch muscles use slightly different fueling systems. They have a different like oxygen threshold. So if you give them a break by, and they also recover a little faster. So if you give them a bit of a break, then they can like replenish and we can go at it again. So if you are more of a probably sprinter build, and um, for whatever distance you're doing, this could be probably like if you were built to sprint 100 meters and you're running anything above that, then this is going to apply to you. If you were built to really like run a fast 10K and you decide to run a marathon, that's still going to apply to you, right? So if you are more on the fast twitch side of things based on the race distance you're choosing to pursue, then we have to understand that walking is probably going to be a really, pro really appropriate here. All right. Even if that's not you, it's still okay. But if you have a higher propensity for speed, let's say, then you are going to do a little, uh, maybe do a little better from like these like, short breaks in the midst of your longer runs. Now, I also totally understand the drive to not want to walk. Um, there's a training run I've done a lot in Salt Lake because it had a very appropriate grade for things I'm trying to do. And it's this like bike path that makes this big loop. And there are a couple hills at the end of this bike path. And when I was training a couple years ago, I really just wanted to get to the top of those hills without walking. And the goal was to not have to walk the hill. Um, and unfortunately, I never really achieved it at the time. I've since done it, and it was kind of a, like, it's, it's a stupid run. It's not a big deal. It's a local thing. But not having to walk that hill was actually a big, like, mark of achievement, this big moment. It's something that I've actually discussed with someone else who, like, runs a really similar loop around here. And it's just this, it's kind of this target that lives in you because at the very end, just like slowly increases and then you, you cap out and you have a bit of a rest period. So if you can make it to the top, you get rewarded with being able to recover. And it was a win and it took a long time. But if I had forced it earlier and just like slogged it up the hill, it wouldn't have felt right. And it's not that had to earn it or something like that is that literally if we define running it's just moving so that both of your feet are in the air at the same time like when you're walking you move forward and there's a one foot on the ground and then both feet are on the ground when you're running one foot on the ground and then both feet are in the air and you keep moving forward and I could have faked it and like run up run up that hill in like heavy quotes that at like 18 minute mile but it wouldn't have been the goal. The goal was to not have to run it at a pace that actually felt like running. And if you train in a way, and like we train that to be the goal, right? If you train the stuff where it's you're not you're not trying to not run, you're trying to not you're not trying to not walk. Sorry, you're trying to not have to walk. And if that becomes the goal, it actually forces you to train in a way that might help you get better. Just because you don't have to walk on your run doesn't mean it was a productive training session. If you're just starting out, you're having a bad day, and you have a recovery run or an easy run schedule, then maybe to get the stimulus you need, you have to walk a bit. And let's say you have like a 30-minute recovery run, and you collectively spend like two minutes walking over the entire course of that run. Not a big deal. It might keep your heart rate down. It can help your muscles regenerate a little bit of energy. 
and you will end up with a better training session for the day that creates the adaptation you're looking to create. Because that is what we're really trying to do with training. We are trying to force the body to adapt in one way or the other. But on the other hand, if you just push through, and because you have this like idea that you have to run, then this easy run might turn into this like moderate hard effort by the end, which means you didn't get the adaptation of recovery that we were looking for. You pushed your increase, you pushed your injury risk up a little bit, and then say you have a speed work the following day, you're going to half-ass that as well. So we actually just half-ass two runs rather than walking for two minutes and getting a better adaptation across the board, all because of like vague goals or pride, right? And walking, we just have to accept that walking isn't bad. People have qualified for the Olympics with short walk breaks. And I also guarantee that those people didn't have to walk on that trial, but they did it because it helped them perform in a way that was best for their physiology. And this also brings up this idea between training and racing. Because like when you're racing on flats, if you choose a run-walk strategy, you're more likely to do like a flat course is what I mean by on flats, not flat shoes. You're likely to do more timed intervals because it allows you to predict things a little better. This goes to shit when we're looking at hills. If we have any amount of appreciable elevation in gain or loss, like if you have a 30% incline somewhere, you're going to walk that almost for sure. So you might have to run a little more elsewhere in order to compensate for that like guaranteed stretch of walking. But I also am not a huge fan of the like timed strategy and training. The only thing I think the only time I think it's like super appropriate is if we're looking at a flattish course and if we are doing some like long runs to help prep for that flattish course, then I think it can be really appropriate. But otherwise, let's do more of a run walk effort. If we're if we're on a shorter run, let's do a run walk effort that actually like works towards how we feel and how we're going. Because just because it helps set a good like pacing strategy doesn't mean it's ideal. It will allow you to get a better adaptation if you like follow your physiology and we take the walks when we, when we need them rather than taking the walks just because it's like four minutes into a run. Now this might not actually be true on race day. Again, training strategy and racing strategy aren't always the same. We often will train in ways that allow us to over leverage adaptations a bit so that we can have them come race day. An easy example of this would be like VO2 max work. You shouldn't really be in a VO2 max space on race day unless we're doing like a 5k or lower. But we do some of these intervals because it helps everything else. The same should could be said for like so many other adaptations. There was a person I trained in my EOS days, and he was not he was not a runner, but he could walk at like 13 to 14 minute mile. And if he wanted to run, um, and he wanted to run an ultra marathon, then I'd really want to focus on running and less on the walking for him. Because as it is, he could already walk a pace that could help him get a sub-24 hour hundred, which there are many reasons that wasn't going to happen for this human being, but that's beside the point. So if he could run a bit, then he'd be even better. His walking adaptation was about tapped out. Like, we're not going to walk faster than that. And if we can hold that pace for long stretches of time, great. So we need to get better at running if, we're, if we were to make this person better at the race, right? So while, and then during the race, this person might actually hike a lot because they're already very good at it. And if we set a race goal of like six months to a year away, then it's probably not going to get that much better at running in that amount of time, but we can make some progress. So during training, we're going to focus a lot on the running in order to build that adaptation so that this person can have a better race on race day and just do enough of the walking so that we don't lose what he already has. During training, I try to avoid these like timed intervals of walking because it helps build a bigger breadth of skill for a lot of people. And then instead, just like walk a bit when you need to. 
we can judge this by heart rate, rate, or we can take the talk test or whatever like you use to judge effort. But just pull back a bit when you need to. And if you feel like you need something that helps you justify walking, then like use those short breaks to fuel. Should be fueling anyway. It is probably a thing that not or it is definitely a thing that almost all of us aren't doing enough. So since it can be hard to fuel while you're on the move, then how about we pair our short walk break with a little bit of fuel? Take 10 seconds, walk, tear open a gel, or pull a waffle or something out of your bag, eat it, and then get back to running. You can pair two things that we're trying to work on, and they'll make them both better. But in short, it's it's okay to walk. And in fact, it might be the right choice depending on the adaptation you're trying to seek during like any particular training session. And you're probably going to walk during your race. You might even run a particular time strategy, depending on your race and your race course, which is great. But during training, um, it is okay to walk. And we just have to figure out where that fits in based on you, your current abilities, and what adaptations we're trying to look at. Don't overthink it too much. Keep your easy work easy. Do hard work. Don't get too regimented. Like... And when it comes to training, just again, the whole goal is to create adaptations that make you a better athlete. In general, that means doing a good amount of various types of work that we're bad at so we can build up our weaknesses while also doing enough of the stuff that we're currently good at that we don't lose it. So go out, train like you care, and you'll be fine. Have a great day, and I hope you have a great next run. Thank you again for listening to the Trail and Ultra Running Training Podcast. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Just a reminder, nothing you hear on this podcast is medical advice, and you should always speak with a medical professional before making changes to your training or your nutrition. If you enjoyed the podcast or found it helpful, please leave a rating or review. It tells the algorithm robots that people like it, and that means more people will hear it. Or even better, just share it with someone who you think would benefit. If you prefer a video version, head to the Trail and Ultra Running Training Group on Facebook or check out the Mountain Goat Endurance Coaching YouTube channel. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great next run.